for those of you who have heard our story in the past, you know that Alamira Sciences is, is dedicated to commitment to changing the paradigm of how we think about and subsequently we treat diabetic macular edema. DME is the leading cause of blindness amongst diabetics, and we certainly believe that a disease such as DME, a long-term persistent disease, would be best treated and optimally by a long-term low-dust therapy such as alluvian a corticosteroid for the treatment of DME. We spent the better part of an hour this morning hearing from companies who are facing challenges to meet the need that we know exists in chronic compliance challenge diseases such as dry eye, glaucoma, and certainly the back of the other retina where we're most interested. And I'm so pleased to tell you and how proud I am the Alamira folks who we have found a way to take a product and get through that regulatory hurdle, get through those development hurdles, and get to commercialization in now four countries around the world. And of course, the most recent being our launch in the U.S. in uh, March of this year. And uh, we're extremely excited about that. So for those of you who don't know a lot about Alluvian, let me give you a quick course on that. Uh, Alluvian is a 3.5 millimeter tube basically filled with 190 micrograms of fluoroacetone acetonide, which is a proven steroid we've known for years. And one implant releases 0.2 micrograms per day, giving a patient three years worth of therapy on a continuous, almost zero order kinetic release for up to three years. Clearly, when you consider the alternatives today of monthly injections of anti-VEGF therapy, maybe bi-monthly, and certainly even quarterly injections of short-acting steroids, we believe this is a real advancement in the opportunity for quality of life of the DME patient. Our uh, journey through the FDA has been well chronicled. It took us uh, a little over three years to get from our CRL to approval back in uh, September of 2014. If there was any silver lining to that, however, it's what we learned in that period about DME. You have to remember our FAME trial was started in 2005 when we knew very little about DME. We were actually the first trial to study DME. What we now have learned through our FAME data, I would suggest through the rise and ride data from Regeneron, certainly the Restore data and the DRCR net protocol I and protocol D data, is that clearly something happens in the DME patient that makes the disease much more of a multifactorial disease over time, unlike the wet AMD patient who has pretty much got a vascular issue. That's pretty, you know, it's VEGF and we need to block the VEGF. DME is much more complex and I think we're seeing that more and more debated amongst the retinal community of how in the future will we treat a much more complex disease where the role of inflammation is clearly going to be inevitably needed to be addressed. So it's not a question of where we, whether we will use steroids in treating DME, it's when. How many anti-VEGF injections will we need before we decide the patient is not just a VEGF driven patient, that there's potentially an inflammatory component to their disease and a shift needs to take place to either moving to a steroid such as Alluvian, a long, low, low dose, long acting steroid, or considering some combination therapy to address this multifactorial component of DME. We asked doctors this very same question during the summer of 2012 and 2014. 260 doctors participated in this market research study and we asked them the question, what is the hope you have of how many, what percent of your patients will reach best corrected visual acuity at certain visual standards? And as you can see here by the wheel, it goes from the, about the one o'clock position, 2020, which is of course optimal, all the way around to 2100. And if you look on the right side of the wheel, you'll notice that the doctors themselves said their hope of getting patients to anything 2040 or were, uh, better, about 45% of the patients. Said another way, 55% of the patients from the doctors on admission probably don't expect to see best corrective vision of any better than 2060. And as David Geyer said about two or three presentations earlier, that's a critical number because patients, of course, want to keep their vision at a level that can keep their driver's license. And at 2060, they do not. We talk a lot about data and a lot about lines on graphs and a lot of numbers, and I really think it's important to focus on the patient when we start talking about the quality of life and what we think Alluvian can bring to those patients. This is a, as a, a visual for you that can show what 2080 and 2040 looks like. So the, on, that, on the chart here, if you look to your left, that patient is seeing at a 2080 visual acuity. Obviously, this person no longer has the ability to drive, their mobility has begun to be eroded, and their quality of life has decreased. On the right side of your screen, 
is a patient who has received a three-line visual improvement as measured by the ETDRS chart, and they're now seeing 2040. And of course, if that were to be maintained, there's a possibility they could return to getting their driver's license and their mobility and the quality of life back. So a very strong visual improvement when you talk about three lines of visual improvement are better, which is what is the primary endpoint of all of these DME trials that we're conducting. I said I didn't want to talk much about data, but this is the famed data set that gives you sort of an overview of what percent of patients actually achieved what I showed you on the prior, line, uh, prior slide, three lines of visual improvement on the ETDRS chart. And so the blue line represents, over the three-year period with one injection, the percent of patients who got to that three line, roughly 30%. But the goal line represents 10 letters or two lines of improvement, which is a significant improvement in quality of life, maybe not enough to get the driver's license back, but clearly to see better and to live a better life. Yellow represents one line or five letters, and the red represents some improvement. So if you're going to put in an implant and you're a doctor consulting with a patient, you want to be able to tell the patients with some high level of confidence, highly likely they're going to see some visual improvement. And I think our data suggests that. This data, quite frankly, is almost 10 years old. The good thing about Alluvian, and I've been in ophthalmology 32 years and launched probably a dozen products, is I've rarely seen a product do what Alluvian has done in the clinically commercial setting, unlike the clinical setting for, for uh, trials. As we, both, as we all know, clinical trials are typically where your drug looks the best. You've sort of stacked the deck in your favor. But with the protocol of Alluvian, the drug was either in or it wasn't. And what we know now about DME today says that in the real life data we're seeing with over 3,000 implants around the world is the benefit to risk assessment of Alluvian in the real world is looking as good or better than it did in the clinic because now we know so much about the disease and we know where to optimally use Alluvian. Well, that's me talking about it. I think it's always enjoyable when you've got a launch that we can let you sit back and maybe about a two-minute video here. What are the doctors and patients in the media saying about Alluvian here in the U.S.? So whoever is responsible, if you could cue up the, uh, the video for me. Ramesh had several treatments, including steroid injections into the eye, which helped. But these injections need to be repeated every few months. Dr. Szilard Kish suggested a new FDA-approved implant. The implant sits in the bottom of the eye so the patient won't see it, and it releases medication for three years before needing a replacement. A device the size of the end of a paperclip 3.5 millimeters is changing the way doctors treat vision loss. Oh, I am. I'm very happy. Loretta Klein has been a diabetic for 30 years. Look down. One of her complications is called macular edema. And that's a condition where you get swelling in the retina and it can impair their vision. It's delivered in very low levels over a continuous period of time. Klein was the first to undergo the procedure. She says it was painless. And in just a minute, it's over. Klein's vision dramatically improved in just a month. Most insurance companies cover Alluvian, and now we're seeing it become a big hit among patients across the nation. Dr. Nancy Holkamp is the Director of Retina Diseases at the Pepos Vision Institute in Chesterfield. And when I talk about moderate vision loss, I'm talking about not being able to read clearly or drive unrestricted. In last fall, the FDA approved Illuvian from Alamera Sciences, an implant that's long-lasting. And this is the first time we've had true long-term drug delivery for eye disease. It releases a steroid and it's working for joy. This scan was taken March 16th when Joy received her first Alluvian injection in her right eye. The retina needs to be compact. These spaces are edema. It's fluid that's leaking out of the, the blood vessels because of the diabetic retinopathy. Now that scan compared to a scan during this checkup five weeks later. She looks like this. One of the great things about this drug is it's absolutely going to reduce uh, uh, the leading cause of blindness from diabetic macular edema in the United States. For Charles, Alluvian has improved the quality of his life. You know, I'm going to have to get another injection for three years. That's pretty amazing. Meaning less time at the doctors and more time on the links. I'm Marty Salt reporting. For those of you who questioned the links there, I think that's a pretty unkept golf course. So I'm not real sure that's, that's as real as we would like to believe. How are we doing commercially? 
Um, our launch progress, as I said earlier, we are now in the U.S. this year. We launched in 2013 in the U.K., 2014 in Germany and Spain, and we have 14 other countries where we have marketing authorization and the opportunity to launch uh, in the future uh, coming months. Licensing deals in Australia, Canada, and Israel, recently a distribution agreement in Italy, and our sales revenue is starting to ramp, and we're very excited about fourth quarter coming through a, to a close and jumping into January because at this meeting we will be able to announce the, uh, the inclusion of a J code, which would be 73J7313, my new favorite password number. Uh, all doctors will now know that they can be reimbursed uh, with Alluvian starting in January, so we're very excited to get that behind us. We think 2016 can be an exciting time for us as reimbursement comes together. Thank you very much.